And all right, so um, we're just gonna get started. So with Off The Mat, I don't know how many, um, <laughs> just what I needed today, thank you. <laughs> um, I don't know how many of you guys actually cut this project. I know it was so last minute. Um, what happened was, you know, I, um, I've been working with the Salty Yankee Kayla and uh, you know, just like her files have been great. She did a custom, uh, two custom files for me uh, last month, which I think one you can kind of see right there, um, Canary, Canary is awesome. So I love her files. They work really, really well for off the map projects. But when you actually do a custom file with her, they are, you know, with, with off the mat in mind, she made that one and Sam look just amazing. But this file is very close to that. So anyway, we've been working with Kayla. Um, this is Grumpy Grinch. It was so last minute. I told her, hey, you know, I'd love to do a tutorial on the Grinch. I'm not gonna make it. I'm just gonna show people how to do it. And then as I started to make it in design space, I was getting so excited because I honestly didn't think that he was gonna make it to 30 inches. Uh, my first guess, if you saw that tutorial yesterday, um, I thought he was gonna be maybe like 24 inches because so much green, you know? Um, but anyway, I was able to make him 30 inches. So I'm curious, I'm gonna check the comments right now. Did anyone actually make it and you're ready to make it with me or you're just watching me make it? So I'm really, really curious about that. So give me a second, let me see if there's anybody. And then, okay, I don't see anybody from the previous comments, all right. I'm gonna assume you didn't because I am never prepared and also it was super last minute. So when I realized like it actually might work as a live, I um, I did the video really quickly and then tried to post it with the materials. So, all right. So my thing with off the mat is that I always like to do my background. Even if the file doesn't really come with a full um, like background, I like having the background just so that you can transfer all your pieces on top of it. And it's just a lot easier than it is if there were like little holes cut out. So what I like to do is I like to put out, let me see how much you guys can see. Okay, you can't really see the top of his head, but I'll talk you through it. Um, so I have an SVG file um, that is my grid of squares. So if you guys, follow me on, you know, for off the map projects, you know that I have a specific way of slicing. I have a grid of squares that I create and then I slice it one square at a time. And the reason why I do that is I think you can actually see it now. I'm gonna put this down a little bit more so you can see it. The reason why I like doing it that way is that you kind of see how like the four squares meet in a corner. The four squares here meet in a corner. It is the squares are completely flushed with each other and that allows um, for these seams to go a little bit more unnoticed. Oh man, I just dropped a piece. Um, because we're basically, you know, I mean off the mat is you're trying to cut something on your Cricut that doesn't fit on a 12 by 12 mat, right? So we're basically, basically taking this big thing, slicing it up into pieces that we can manage, that we can cut on the Cricut with 12 by 12 cardstock. I prefer to use 12 by 12 cardstock. Um, and then we're piecing it back together, you know, like a puzzle. So any place where I feel like, you know, we can have an impact and make the seams look a little bit less, it's worth doing because in the end, all these little pieces, like all five or six tips that I have, it ends up being a very seamless project even though you have something that is like 30 inches, right? Um, something that's pretty comparable to a toddler and it's huge and it looks just like the character. So I'm kind of, you know, like I can incorporate all those pieces, like picking the right file, using the right materials, um, with color, cardstock, you know, glitter, not glitter, all of that, and the little grid. So once you have this down, what I like to do is flip it over because we're gonna tape it from behind. Because even scotch tape, it's clear, but it's not clear, right? Um, so I tape it from behind so that the tape doesn't show at all. So you take two pieces at one time, and I'm gonna grab my scotch tape, okay. And you, with two pieces at a time, I think you can see, yeah, you can see this. I want to pick one up. Yes, I do this all with a Cricut. Um, I pick up one piece 
And this is also why I like the grid of squares because these two pieces, I know they line up. So I can just push one up against the other and then tape it. So I'm making it like, I'm pushing it in there so that the seams are as flushed as possible. Knowing that his green body is gonna cover most of the seams here. The only seams are really gonna be at the edge edges. So when you think about the Grinch, he's only gonna have little seams in the border. The green part, there are three seams total if you followed my design space tutorial. But we did it where honestly, I feel like when I show you, you're not, you're not gonna see the seams. All right, so we're gonna put these two together. So let's see. I'm, I can talk and do my tutorials because you know, obviously I do my YouTube, but there's something about talking and reading the comments and working on this. <laughs> so I feel like I'm super scattered. Uh, thank you. Someone said they love my work. Um, oh, so while we're doing this though, have you guys caught my post the last couple days? I've been super excited about um, talking about creators that have been really supportive and just kind of like have helped me in general in all different ways. So uh, today is Crystal. And so if you guys haven't had a chance to check it out, it's kind of cool. I can, you know, I'll tell you why um, each one of these creators are amazing in my life. And I think it's just kind of cool. I mean, um, I like to read how other, like if, if someone else did this, it'd be kind of cool because I like to see into like their relationship and how, you know, the relationships that they have. And I'm just nosy. <laughs> um, all right, I just wanted to make sure I didn't have any comments. All right, once you taped up the pairs, then we're taping pairs to pairs, right? So now I'm gonna lift this one up and I'm going to um, tape it to the to that pair up there. And you see like, it's just so easy. Everything lines up. Um, when you slice it the way that um, I slice it. Okay. And this Grinch is so cute. Um, so again, if you missed it, um, it's by Kayla from The Salty Yankee. So you can either just go straight to her website or you can um, follow her first on Instagram if you haven't followed her. And then um, she has you know links in her profile. All right, so we're almost done with the background. So I'm gonna flip it this way so maybe you can see it a little bit better. All right, and then here's the last piece that we're gonna put together. Now with the background, so I sometimes, when black is like a major part of the character like Mulan or Snow White, um, I do like using my glitter black cardstock, but the problem with using glitter black cardstock is that um, you then definitely need to use glue to glue everything on top of the glitter cardstock because the glitter cardstock has that texture. So sometimes I like to use double-sided tape, but that's not gonna work there or it won't work for very long. And um, the other thing with black glitter cardstock is it has a white core. So you're going to see it a little bit. Oh, and look! Crystal just joined, so she is the creator that I am so grateful for today. So if you don't follow her, you can see why I love her so much and then show her the love. Although I don't think she needs it. Honestly, like my post with all the comments, um, everyone is already telling me that they love her. So, <laughs> um, oh my gosh, Crystal said she made it. I don't believe it. You're gonna have to like show me. <laughs> okay, so here is here is the background it looks unimpressive right now but as we start to put it down um it's gonna look really really cute now the other thing is you can kind of see right now whenever i bend it the light catches into those seams right and that's why i like putting this um in the end i like putting a foam board behind it because the foam board keeps it stiff so then you won't have the light catching the seams so it's going to stay flat and you won't see that. But I mean, all of this will be covered by his face and his scarf and his body. So, all right, let me see if there's anything else. Um, yes, someone said that Crystal is awesome and they follow her. I get it, you guys love her. <laughs> okay, the next thing that I do with and off the mat is I put down all my pieces 
and I don't tape or glue it at this moment because, um, oh, Crystal, no, I made it to the live. I knew it. I'm like, there's no way she cut this thing and prepped it and is ready by now. Um, what was it? Oh, yeah. So I like to put all my pieces down right now. The reason why I don't glue it or tape it down is because I still want to make adjustments. So sometimes um, if there's a seam like right there and if I can move it just a little bit and it makes a difference, uh, you know, then I will do it. So this still gives you room to maneuver around. Um, all right, so here are the first two slices. This whole body was connected to the arms. So where I sliced it is right here right at the like the armpit it's like maybe a quarter of an inch so you you know like when i put it together you can't see the seams so it's going to be unnoticeable so these two seams are gonna disappear and so that's you know i've seen people cut things wherever it's most convenient and so sometimes they'll cut something like right across the belly. So it's this long line across the belly as opposed to maybe cutting at the ankle where it's just a little bit shorter. So it's, you know, just incorporating every little, um, every little thing that we can. All right, so here's the face. And it's so cute. So I used... Um, I think the only glitter that I used was for the, the green and the red. So, the, And he's made up of three different green cardstock. So I went with regular cardstock for everything else so that he would kind of like shine through. Okay, here is the last seam. How big is the glitter cardstock that I'm using? 12 by 12. So um, I like to typically use 12 by 12 cardstock for everything. Uh, regular cardstock, glitter cardstock, because uh, it's just easiest to stock and it's mostly what is available, right? Um, some people have asked me, can you make this project using eight and a half by 11? You can make, you can make any project, any off the map project with even six by six paper if you wanted to. But the problem is the smaller you go and the bigger you go with the project, you're just gonna have more seams. So it's, what are you comfortable with? Like, are you comfortable with seeing all those seams? Um, so I prefer to use 12 by 12 and knowing that I'm using 12 by 12, I max out the project, you know, with minimal amount of seams that I'm comfortable with. Cause if you guys remember, let me check the comments to make sure I'm answering everything. Um, if you guys remember when I did Jasmine, so I'm five, two and a quarter. I did Jasmine at five feet, one inch, and she looked horrible like i should have never done that i wanted to try it i wanted to see it was just like oh so many seams it was yuck but um had i done her at four feet which is still i mean that's like as tall as my almost seven year old right um she would have been seamless so it's like four feet or five feet five feet looking very imperfect in perfect <laughs> uh, or four feet with total perfection right like you go with the four feet so anyway um where do you buy the foam board dollar tree so dollar tree is the best place for that because it's a dollar and the foam board is 20 inches by 30 inches so it fits most of my characters all right last seam so you know the two seams are at the armpits which i am betting that you will not be able to see it after this i'm i will once i piece it all together um, I will do a close like video, like, you know, scan of everything and point out where the seams are here. I, you won't see that. Okay. So the third seam is here. It's in the face and it's right here. And again, it's so teeny tiny right there. I mean, even not taped and just pushed up against the, the two pieces pushed up against each other. The seam just disappears. So he's going to be seamless except for the black part. So um there you have it all right so i'm gonna put this down and so normally when i have um seams that you need to you know push up against each other i like to tape them from behind kind of like i did the black background um but the problem is this one it's so teeny tiny so i think what i'm gonna do instead is 
I'm going to put down glue right here when I get to this part and I'm going to just kind of hold it together and let it dry like that um, as opposed to having it already connected because it's just such a small piece and I don't think I can handle it. Um, okay, so because it's kind of hard to see, I'm actually going to do this the way I normally that I wouldn't do, but you can kind of see where this body should go. So I'm going to tape, I'm going to glue him down as we're talking so I can show you what this looks like and this looks like. And then what, if I can show you that part with the arms, then I think what I'm going to show you next is how I do my foam board because you, once you put down one piece then you know how to put down all the other pieces. So, okay, I am going to use Barely Art Glue and darn it, I forgot to do something. I am like really bad with um, turning off my glue, my hot glue gun. And also, and I know this, it's like, if I know it, I should be able to correct it, but uh, yeah, it doesn't happen. Um, the other thing that I'm bad with is I forget to close up my Barely Art glue. So it comes with the, the needle and then you gotta poke it through. I absolutely hate that. I, I'm, I'm much better at it, but um, yeah, I'm still really bad at it. Okay, it's going through. Um, <laughs> oh my God, me too, yes. It's like, well, knowing is half the battle, right? And then fixing it is a whole nother battle. <laughs> okay, so I've got that down. I'm gonna flip this over. I love Barely Art for a number of reasons, but glue wise i love it because i like the precision tip um the tip does does it all for me um because i love it for like my other projects oh, see i knew it my glue is jammed and usually it's just like a little piece that's coming out okay all right now i typically don't like oh my god this glue tip is gonna kill me I'm gonna undo it let's see I do the same <laughs> yes crystal it's hot mess it's like I should have a checklist but I don't all right hopefully I cleared it out now Okay, I typically don't like using glue because of just what I did, right? Like I'm really messy and so I get it all over my hands and then I end up picking up a piece of cardstock and it shows and I just hate it. But um, I do like Barely Art glue because it dries quickly. It does dry clear and I haven't, uh, I haven't really messed up my projects with it. So, and for some projects, you have to have it. Like my potato chip bag, uh, those party favors. It's perfect for it. And it comes out just enough glue. All right, I'm gonna put this down. And then I really wanna show you the armpit. <laughs> Cause it's important to make it look seamless. Um, the other thing with the glue is, you see how it kind of pops up a little bit? Um, I like to push down on it while it's drying. It only takes a little bit before it dries, but I just want to make sure that it's drying flat. Because, you know, um, when you work with glue, sometimes it curls up a little bit. It's minimal with barely art, but occasionally it still happens. So I like to just kind of press down while it's drying. Um, all right, I want to make sure that I'm answering all your questions. Now, um, let's see. Okay, so I feel like that's pretty dry. So let's work on, let's see, I'm going to move it. I wonder if you guys, if the comments are in your way as well on your screen. I know, I'm like so bad at this stuff. Um, okay, so this little guy goes right here up against this seam, right? And I don't think you can see. Hold on. All right. There. Okay. Just for now, I'm going to switch it like that. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue it and hold it down right there. Oh, man. This is why you don't. What happened here? 
Oh, there. I was like, wait a minute, I messed up. Okay, so you see how like the seam, even just holding it, like you can't, can't see it right there, right? Everybody better agree with me. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna put the glue down. And also knowing that you have, sometimes like right now my glue is not working with me. Um, I will also stick like a glue dot underneath. Just depends on like what's going on that day, I swear. Sometimes it's like it works totally fine and then it just doesn't. All right, so I'm gonna hold this really close and tight up against the thing because I want it to dry there. Alright, yep, looks good. So that's one side. You're gonna do the same with this side and the same with this head up here. Alright, so let me flip this up. We're gonna now talk about the foam board. Okay, so we're not gonna put everything down because I think that will take forever and then I also have to pick up my daughter in a little bit. <laughs> so I'm gonna move this aside. I'm gonna get the foam board. So, and I also love having these foam boards. They're sort of like my project boards too. So kind of like this, I use it to put all the pieces for each project that I'm working on. They're a dollar, so they're perfect, right? Okay, so I'm gonna put this down. And like I was saying, the board is uh, 20 inches by 30 inches so it fits most you know most projects now if you want to completely cover have him covered in this foam board you can use the diagonal to make sure and then he would be completely covered but here's the thing with the foam board and I think this really depends on what your purpose is so and what I mean by that is if you're doing this for your own party for your own child relative something like that then I wouldn't bother covering him completely with foam board because the tip right here is going to be difficult because of his hair it's kind of thin right you'd have to cut around each one of these pieces he's going to be super supported if you just support him from here down so um, you know it depends on where your final product is going uh, the other thing is I've also done it a few times where because people have said they don't like the way the foam board comes out and it looks kind of messy. You can, one of the tips is using a really sharp X-Acto knife. So I use Excel blades. I, I do like their products. Um, I cut it on a self-healing mat so that I can press down. I get really good pressure and I'm cutting, I'm making really clean cuts. So you're going to see that in a second. Um, the other thing is you can, so I've done this a few times and I've only done it a few times, um, is you, you know, the crepe paper or like streamer paper that you can get at the Dollar Tree or anywhere, it's super cheap. You can wrap that around like a pinata on the foam board before you put this piece down. So then it actually looks really, really pretty from behind. It's a lot of work. So don't get me wrong. If that's how you're selling it, please, price in the amount of work that that takes because there's no reason we should be doing this for free <laughs> okay how i do this is i take a white pencil and i trace all around the piece and the white's not going to show because i'm going to cut inside the white lines because he doesn't need to be 100 percent supported to be really supported like if you can see behind, actually, let me show you. So Canary is a really good example because her hair is kind of like delicate, right? Like it's got all those edges and I didn't really want to support the back of that. So if you look to see what it looks like from behind, it's like a really rough cut. This is for me though. I wouldn't send it like this, but so you can see and you, you know, she's, standing propped up on my table. So this is enough to support it. If you find that something starts to, um, like if you accidentally drop this and this part gets to be a little bit 
damaged. You can always reinforce this by putting like dowels right here and then putting another layer of the foam board. I mean, there's so many things that you could do. It just depends on, um, again, what you, what the final purpose of this is, you know, is for. But see, look, I can hold it like this. It's just totally good, right? All right. So the other important thing is at the bottom, you should always have it so that it's standing on the foam board. So here, I'm probably not going to cut, well, I guess I could cut inside right here, but I'm not gonna cut along the edges of the foot. I'm gonna cut it so that the foam board is actually extended. And that's so that it's gonna stay propped up. Um, it's just easier that way, it looks good. And look, I forgot to close up my glue. Um, <laughs> even though I was just talking to you guys about that. Um, looks like E.T. Oh, you know what? He does look like E.T. Um, all right, so back to my white. Okay, so we're gonna trace around this piece and I'm gonna show you how I do it. And... All right. The other thing is, I don't know if you can see this right now. Oh yeah, you can. Um, there's a hole in between, you know, he's standing like this, right? So there's a hole right here. Sometimes it's not worth cutting this section in foam board because then the arm gets kind of thin, so you're not providing as much support. And then also you need to cut it really cleanly right here, otherwise it gets, um, it just looks bad. And so sometimes it's not worth it. I'd rather have the foam board just be there and no one would know any better than to have like a botched job right there. And then also you make it less stable. It just depends. In this character, because his arms are so thin, I don't know, it's up to you. And again, where this is going, if it's traveling and stuff like that. So, all right, let me see. Okay. Are you guys, I'm curious what this Thanksgiving is looking like. Um, so during the holidays, do you guys get on, do you still craft personally? Like, not orders, like of course you're gonna have to craft orders if you took orders, but um, like do you craft for your own personal enjoyment and do you watch YouTube tutorials? <laughs> I'm trying to convince myself that no one's watching so I don't have to put out content. Um, but that might be wishful thinking, I'm curious. Okay, so I'm not gonna trace this top portion because I'm gonna cut around it. So I'm almost done tracing this. I'm gonna show you what that looks like. Okay, so this is what he looks like. Okay, so I'm gonna cut in the middle right here. So let me make sure that my board is flat and I'm gonna face him down like this so you can see a little bit better. All right, so I'm gonna go inside the white lines. Oops. I'm not completely flat. And I like to do one smooth stroke. So, Oops. so that's what it's going to look like. Okay. So you're just going to go all the way around. Now, um, a couple of things when it comes to cutting. So right now, like I'm having uh, wrist issues. So every time that I cut foam board, it's difficult for me because I'm not putting the same amount of pressure that I used to. And then also I've noticed that I'm sort of um, making adjustments for my wrist. And so like I cut at an angle. So you see when I cut at an angle, you can actually see the white foam board underneath. If you cut straight down, it's going to be flat, right? So you can only see what you see on top. But right now I'm cutting at an angle to adjust for my wrist. 
So it's coming out like this. So you can actually see the foam layers all along here. Uh, oh, holy knife. I've yet to find a good knife like that. Yes. What are we making? We're making the Grinch, baby Grinch. So I'm going to show you that in a second. This, I mean, first of all, it's pink, so I love it. But it's Excel blades. Um, I absolutely love it. Um, I follow them on Instagram. I don't, I'm not an affiliate or anything. So if you love this blade, let me show you what the top, I'm going to do a quick cut. Um, oh yeah, thank you, Celeste. Um, I'm going to do a quick, really quick cut for the head. Okay. Just to show you how the knife is and also like how I would do this for personal use. Okay. So if you remember, I'm not going to support the spiky tip. So I'm just going to cut it. I want my foam board to be straight, flat, but the projects are so big and I'm trying to fit it in here. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to cut it straight across like this. See, I mean, this knife, this blade, it's worth it. Um, okay. And also when you have a sharp blade like this, right? You see how like, it's just smooth. So even though it doesn't cover the whole thing, which let me show you another example. Oh, uh, here's a good one. This is a small one. This is my little Hello Kitty, right? But look at the back. It doesn't, it's not completely to the edge, but it still looks, to me, it still looks very clean and totally acceptable. So that's kind of, my whole take on it is if you have a smooth cut because you have a smooth blade and you're using the self healing mat, it just allows you to be really strong and push down for a clean cut. So I love these self healing mats. And right now Cricut's having a crazy sale. So if you want to pop on over there, um, that is really on sale. And I'm hope hoping Celeste can pop a an affiliate link on here for me. Um, Celeste is my friend. <laughs> um, I love my 12 by 24 mats. And I think it's kind of getting around. I see a lot of people posting now that they use the 12 by 24, or maybe you've always used it. But I use the green one. I don't care that it says standard grip. I use it for paper. I use it for everything. Because when you first peel off the uh, the plastic it's super sticky right so i'll use it for my vinyl um htv or adhesive vinyl as it gets less sticky i use my paper or when it's really sticky i'll use um the stiffer paper like glitter cardstock or something so i find that there's really good use for it and then also um you're paying for 12 by 24, so you know you can feed it the other way around. So it's you're basically paying for two mats, um, but it's way cheaper because one of those mats, I think they don't they go for like $13 or something ridiculous like that on sale. You can get it for I think right now each 12 by 12 if you buy it bulk with all you know um, during the sale, I think it comes out to like a dollar and 80 cents or something like that. So it, that's the only time that I buy the mats. Um, and I do buy it in bulk and I do buy a lot of Cricut pro products. So there's a purpose for everything, but see, super easy to cut, right? Once you cut this, then the way I would do it is Sorry, this is looking really delicate for my hands right now, so I'm not gonna do it because I just feel like it's gonna aggravate my wrist right now. But you can kind of see where I'm going with this, right? Like it's super easy and fast to do. Let me show you what it looks like when we put it back on. So here is Baby Grinch coming back on. I know nothing's complete right now. <laughs> let's see. Uh, well, let's make sure that I haven't missed any comments. Um. Okay, so let's see. Um, I got the Cricut X-Acto knife and I dislike it. Mm, it smells and gets messy. I'm definitely getting this one that you have. Um, you know, I used to use the Cricut knife, um, but then I found this one and I just, I like the grip. Um, and then I also, I haven't switched out the blade yet and I've had this for quite some time. So, 
All right, so when, you know what, let me cut this bottom part right here. So that you can actually see it the way i glue this down is i always glue the bottom parts down first so i'm going to glue i'm going to use my hot glue gun and you see what i mean by i cut at an angle over here earlier because you can see the white so to fix that i would just go back in here and cut straight down if you can See, so now you can't really see the white because I cut it straight down. So just every little thing, right? Everything will adds up. Um, okay, so you glue down just a little bit to get the feet down. And then I like to turn it over like this. And then I lift up the project and I start gluing him down from here over a little bit at a time to make sure that each portion gets laid down and supported and then I still have access to the rest of him, right? Like to the head. So if you do this, kind of like just roll him down, um, then he will be completely supported. Let's see if I'm missing any more comments. All right. All right. So now that I feel like I've given you that part of it, let's go and finish putting him back together. I still have like 15 minutes before I got to get going. So if you guys have any questions right now too, I mean, you've been pretty good about asking me, but if you have any questions, Grinch related or not, <laughs> we can talk about that. Okay, so this piece over here, let me move it over. This is another part where, you know, we were slicing it earlier that I was telling you about. So I'm going to put the glue down and I'm just gonna press it up against each other and see how like the seams disappear. So I just, this is one of those projects that I get excited about. I get excited about anything that looks really good. I don't, um, I don't watch a lot of these movies and get to know these characters. So I'm more excited just that it looks good, the paper looks good, uh, the project looks amazing. All right, so let's see if I like clogged up this glue again. Oh no, I did not, okay. Oh, you guys didn't even tell me. Are you crafting during Thanksgiving? No one told me. And then, um, and then I guess my other question is, what do you want to see me do live next week? So I'm trying to do a live once a week. So I think Tuesday is a good day because Monday is just, you know, you're trying to get back from the weekend and trying to get your life in order. So I don't want to do it Monday. And then Tuesday is like, you know, you still have time in the week to do fun stuff before it gets towards the weekend again. You're like, shit, I have all this stuff that I need to do. No time for live crafting. <laughs> um, a big elf babysitting. Um, you're babysitting or you, or, you, or you don't have a babysitter? Sorry. Got too many things running through my head. Okay. So you, okay, I'm still really excited about these two seams because they are gone. And actually from where I'm standing right now, I can't see where the seams are. I mean, I know where they are, but um, I actually can't really see it. So I'm curious if you can see it. And I have my YouTube going on and I can't see it on that screen either. So I'm super excited about that. And he's 30 inches, so he's gonna look really good. Let me put him up. So when he's done and I take a picture next to him, his face is like as big as my face, right? And it's all using 12 by 12 inch cardstock. Um, a big elf. I did a big elf last year. I have the YouTube tutorial. Unless you're asking me if I'm if to do it live or if you're telling me that that's what you're doing. Um, okay, let's see. Here's his face, and his face is super cute. The file is from the Salty Yankee. Kayla always does a really really good job with her files. I absolutely love them. So same thing up here. This is, sorry, this is a seam right here and it's right where the head is, like the eyebrows right there. And we're gonna take, we're gonna glue it just right up against each other and you're not gonna be able to see the seams. And 
you're, you wouldn't be able to see the seams in a number of colors with glitter cardstock. Um, gold is always a good one. Uh, gold, silver, any of your dark glitter cardstock will cover up the seams. The lighter ones, even the lighter ones, because even white, it has like the specks in them. So you might be able to cover up the seams pretty well. So that is my preferred, you know, I love throwing in glitter for the seams, but it also really photos really well. Um, and uh, I like using Ground Up Creations. This is 30, 300 GSM, so it's really thick. Let me show you an example. their paper here somewhere. I just put it away. Okay, here we go. You can hear it, right? So this is 300 GSM. You can watch. It doesn't, it doesn't really move or bend, right? So these are great for like if you're doing a delicate cake topper kind of deal and you only want um, a few layers, these are really good for that. Where do I buy the cardstock? You can buy it on Amazon. Uh, so it's on, I've listed it on my Amazon shop. Um, you can also buy straight through their website. So I don't remember the prices, but I have a discount code. It's the useless crafter, I think. <laughs> if you go go to my profile link, and when you click on that link, it's, it has all the affiliate links, and it also has the codes to use. I know. I. I, um, I sign up with everybody that I use their products, so I have a hard time remembering it. Let's see, how difficult is that cardstock to cut? Well, I'm so glad you asked me that. So, I like my Cricut products, but the one thing that I don't, well, I don't like many things, but one of the things that I don't like to use is their knife, like their blade for the actual Cricut maker. So I use, um, I use the blades on Amazon where it's like, I don't know, 30 blades for five bucks or something like that. So what happens is every time that my blade starts to cut not so well, I just swap it out because I don't know, for however much money that is, it's it's worth it. Like my cardstock cuts really well. I do cut it on one pass. So I'll do it on um, glitter cardstock and I'll cut. Sometimes I have to cut it again. It just depends on the state of my blade at that moment. So I do like using the blades. It's on my Amazon shop. Um, I'll show you what it looks like. So it comes like in a, in a little Ziploc bag like this. And I just, I, I love them. The other tip that I have is because I cut car, I, I'm, mainly a paper cutter um so when i use vinyl so whether i use metallic vinyl adhesive vinyl or um heat transfer vinyl i have a specific blade for just vinyl because if it only cuts vinyl it stays shut for a very long time so it's important to me that when i the few times that i do use vinyl that i get a really clean cut um, so I will switch it out every time I cut vinyl, which is not, like I said, not that often. I have this. So you can see I used to buy Cricut stuff because this is what their, their blades come in, right? I don't even remember how much this is. Like it comes in five. I want to say it's like 40 bucks or something crazy like that. So anyway, I used to buy it. I don't anymore. So what I did was I put um, stickers on it. So this is vinyl. This is these blades are only to cut vinyl, kind of like my scissors. I have scissors that I only use to cut ribbon. <laughs> um, and that way, every time I go to use it, it's sharp and it's going to cut like I expect it to. So that's kind of like my thing. Um, let me see. Oh, you're welcome. Such a great tip. I, you know, sometimes the only problem is, okay, this is what you need to do. When you switch out to cut vinyl, put this somewhere so obvious so that you remember to put it back. There have been a few times where I've left that blade in and then I go and I cut my paper cardstock and then I feel like I've ruined that blade. I mean, I'll keep it in, of course, so it's still great until it runs out, but then I'm, you know, then the next time I use vinyl, I use a brand new blade. So that's the only thing. Um, all right, so 
I don't know. Now that we're talking about materials, what else can I show you? Um, some of you guys have been asking about the skin color cardstock. So I have a little bit of an update. I had originally wanted to do a pre-sale of the cardstock, my curated selection. Um, I had wanted to do it last week, but we couldn't get a status on the actual order of the papers coming. So we finally, it's moving along. Um, and, uh, so the pre-sale will be coming soon. As soon as I get like another update, I don't want to take pre-sale orders and then it still be like two months out before I actually get it. But the order has been placed. It's like in, I don't know, it's in line. So I'm super excited. Uh, so let's just tell me that a bunch of people did respond. They are crafting over the holiday and gosh, they're watching <laughs> tutorials on YouTube. Dang it. Okay. So I'm going to post, I'm going to continue posting videos. Um, and hello from Puerto Rico. I love that. Um, okay. Let's see. I'm going to wrap it up soon. So let me see what else I'm looking at. What else do you guys want to see? Um, oh, I was asked recently how I store my cardstock. My cardstock is getting out of hand right now, but I used to store it and I can't lift it up because it's so heavy, but you know, those big bins from, um, Ikea, they're the big white bins with the lid. So I kind of put it in there so that the paper can stand without getting bent. And, and I have it organized by bins. So one bin is only uh, glitter cardstock. I actually have two bins of glitter cardstock. And then my third bin is of like specialty paper. And then my other, my less expensive paper, they all go in that 12 by 12 um, containers like at Michael's. Hold that thought, I have one right here and I'll show you what that looks like. And I haven't checked, but I'm sure these are on sale for Black Friday. So I get these when they're, you know, on sale. Don't buy full price because you're going to hate yourself. Um, I use needle labels. So I pack them up by colors. So this is greens and yellows. And so they all go in here like this. And I have like a ton of these. So they're broken up again, like by color. And then, um... But my expensive paper, you know, they're out more. Um, I pull it out and I can sort through them. Let's see. You've been my crafting teacher since I started. Yay. Thank you, Mona. I love it. Um, oh, well, then you'll appreciate this. So my last creator that I'm thankful uh, for is going up tomorrow. And my relationship started with her when she actually took one of my classes. So I'm excited to showcase her tomorrow. Um, can you use glitter foam instead of glitter cardstock? Same glue then. Glitter foamy. Um, so I think I know what you're talking about. Those are the foam sheets that have the adhesive behind it. Um, I guess you could use that. The only reason why I don't use it, um, is I feel like it, it it's not as pretty as your 300 GSM cardstock. So let me show you what that, like, especially now because we're online, so you can kind of see like what it would look like on camera. So this is car, um, ground up creations. So I like using their cardstock because you can see like it really shines and it's really, really pretty. So um, especially when you use it next to non glitter cardstock, then it shines. I, I think it stands out a little bit more but it photos really well. And so I don't really see that with the foam sheets. Like I feel like the foam sheets don't, um, they're a little bit more dull, but yes, I think you can use it. And then, yeah, you can either glue it if it doesn't have that adhesive or just use the adhesive. All right, let me see. I'm gonna take a few more questions if you guys have it. And, um, all right, let's see. How often do you replace the blade? Um, that totally depends on how many projects you're doing, right? And, and what you're cutting. So if I do a bunch of projects, I don't know, I can't even tell you. I have, I haven't, I've only bought, 
I think, two sets of the blades on Amazon. And I haven't gone through all of it. Um, and I do, uh, I don't even want to, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't notice when I replace it because I get irritated <laughs> when I go to pull something off the mat and I'm like, oh, it didn't cut, right? I'll, I'll keep an eye on it. I'll give it another chance like because maybe you didn't use the brayer and it's not down all the way. I mean, there's multiple reasons as to why you don't get a clean cut, right? So it's put on notice. And then I try to observe as to like if it's the blade or something else that I'm doing. And then I just replace it. So I can't, I don't know how often I replace it. But again, I could be doing 10 times more projects than you, or you could be doing 100 times more than me with your orders. So it just, you know, it depends on what you're cutting. Um, all right. Um, I hate when that happens. Oh man. And there's something about like, I don't know, like sometimes I'm not cheap and sometimes I'm super cheap. Like I will pull off a like paper that is more on the expensive side, let's say $2 a sheet, right? I am unwilling to throw away that sheet of paper that's $2. When I think about it, I'm like, why am I stressing and spending an hour with my X-Acto knife afterwards trying to like trace around it to save $2? I'm like, my mind is like not all there all the time <laughs> so yeah it drives me insane um ah there's a few of you guys that, that are just joining and i'm about to get off but i will be posting this i will be here next tuesday i might even because we are here for the holidays i might just randomly do another live oh i wanted to talk about one more thing though um because this is kind of new to my craft world but do you guys use the gold flakes I am absolutely in love with these gold flakes. They're so easy to use. I have it on my desk somewhere. Let me see. It's like a, um, a jar. Here it is. And so I've used it. I just did a big wedding acrylic sign, which I'm going to post soon so you can see it. But I absolutely love it. Um, it was 20 inches by 30 inches. So kind of like this foam board. Um, and I did like two lines and you can't even tell that I even used anything from this box. So it's um, it's on my Amazon shop, but look at what I tried to do. So I did an ornament and I added the gold flakes. So anyway, this is coming up soon. I'm, you know what, I might do that this, this week to do a few ornaments on live, but um, I'm loving the gold flakes if that's something that you wanna add because it's not that expensive and um, no, I don't use regular glue, although you can. Um, I did buy this because it was on Amazon. It came recommended. It's Speedball Metal Leaf Adhesive. And so it's just like this clear glue. I did experiment with Barely Art Glue and the gold. And where did I put that thing? I just did it. So visually, they look the same. So I use Barely Art Glue and I use this. Um, I tested out the gold flakes and also the gold sheets. I feel like they all work the same way. It's just a matter of preference. So I prefer gold flakes over sheets because it's easier for me to pick up a little piece at a time than to pull a whole sheet out and then rip it up. So that's just personal preference. Um, and I liked this because I actually use a brush with this. So I brush it down, it's a little bit more flat onto the acrylic, I guess, and then I put the gold flakes on. Whereas with Barely Art Glue, when I did it, I used the tip, and so I think it might have came out too much, and so I didn't like it. So I definitely did prefer using the Speedball Metal Leaf. And all this stuff is on my Amazon shop. Um, my I'm getting so organized. So between my, between my website, and my Amazon shop, things are organized by project. So when I go to make something, you can see all the products that I use. So hopefully you guys appreciate my, uh, my organizational skills because uh, it's a pain. <laughs> it was such a pain in the butt to organize them. Um, all right, I gotta get going. I appreciate you guys. It's been a lot of fun. 
and I will see you next week, if not earlier. Have a happy Thanksgiving, and I hope you check out my post the last couple days highlighting the three creators that I am super thankful for this season, and I have my last one tomorrow, so stay tuned. All right. Um, Oh, thank you. We someone someone just wrote we appreciate you. I appreciate you guys too. All right. See you guys next time. Bye. Whoop. And I better turn this off. Thanks guys.